September is National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, and right now we're going to learn a lot about it. We have two special guests. I'd like to welcome Dr. Tree Din and also Cynthia Weiss. And Cynthia, you have a personal experience with it. You were diagnosed in 2004, and you just have a great story, and really you're going to help inspire people along the way. But let's start off by learning more about what's happening. So, Dr. Din, you are a gynecologic oncologist, so you have an extreme specialty when it comes to this. So let's just start out, what is the definition of ovarian cancer? Ovarian cancer is really when cancer abnormal cells develop, not just from the ovaries, but really in a whole host of tissues, including the fallopian tubes or the skin of the abdomen, which is called the peritoneal cavity. And then oh. how common is yeah, this? Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted yeah. to know. It's uh, relatively common. It's the fifth uh, cancer in uh, terms of statistically in the United States with about 22,000 new cases a year. Unfortunately, about 14,000 deaths annually from ovarian cancer. Now, Cynthia, when you were diagnosed, were you, were you knowledgeable at all? Because you are in the medical field, so... But, but, but was yeah. this one that you just didn't know much so about? So I wasn't working in healthcare at the time. Okay. 33, never married, no children, and just had a lot of abdominal bloating when I sat. Um, didn't matter what I ate, if I drank a cup of coffee, a little bit of water, had a sandwich, salad, didn't matter. And I came to find out I'd had an ovarian cyst, so it was pressing on my abdomen and on my bladder when I sat or laid down. So I knew nothing. I didn't find out much until after my diagnosis when I really went to begin researching what ovarian cancer is all about. Um, and then I had a recurrence. So um, now I know a lot more than I did back then. And what are some of the risk factors? Yeah, so uh, there's really no risk factor, but one of the new things in the last couple of years that we know is about 10% of ovarian cancers are actually genetically predetermined. Very similar uh, in a very famous case of Angelina Jolie. So for patients or for people who have a family history, we really uh, recommend uh, early diagnosis by getting them genetically tested. And let's talk about, so what's the name of that test? Okay, and the test, uh, there's, uh, it's BRCA. The gene mutation itself is the BRCA1 and 2 mutations, but those are not the only mutations that cause ovarian cancer. And so now we can test for many uh, of these uh, genetic mutations. Cynthia, you made a point to say not married, no children, because one of the things I'm sure that goes directly into your mind, first, I want to stay alive. Second, you, you obviously after surgery, chemo, everything that goes along with the treatment are unable, but that's not the case at all for you because you have a beautiful family. <laughs> so I, I got married and I have a little girl who's now eight. So yeah, I was able to go on to do all the things that I wanted to do, but, but you're right, Eden, when I first got the diagnosis, the first thing that went through my head was, I'm not gonna be able to be a mom. But recognizing there's different types of treatments, but I opted to have a hysterectomy, went through chemo, radiation. Um, thankfully, the second time, um, didn't have to go through quite those circumstances with the folks at Mayo. But, um, you know, you're able to still use technology and new innovations in healthcare to, you know, reach all the things that you still want to do. Um, so I have a wonderful family now. I'm able to do all of the things that I normally might, except maybe uh, work out to really high impact aerobics these days, but uh, <laughs> a little bit of scar tissue is still here and there. But I, I think it's really just a matter of paying attention to your body and, and understanding what's going on. And let's talk about that because a lot of times, let's just say if you have something that just doesn't seem right, people get scared and they're afraid to go because they don't want to know really what's happening. What do you recommend? Like, should you be proactive in this case? Do you get the genetic testing? Is it family history? Is it all of these things? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think we should think about genetic testing for patients who have a family history, not definitely for everyone. But in regards to what uh, Cynthia said about symptoms, it is these vague abdominal symptoms that a lot of people have. So I think being uh, 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 recognizing the symptoms of your body getting a good checkup, and a good checkup in terms of ovarian cancer can be simply a, a pelvic exam, what gynecologists or family practitioners do all the time. But missing that step, uh, we will miss a large number of cases. Well, I just want to thank you both for your time and especially for you sharing your personal story with everybody because it's important to get the word out and to help people out. Now, if you want to learn more, you can call the Mayo Clinic, and here's the number. It's 904-953-2272, or you could visit them online, mayoclinic.org. Thanks again. Right now we're going to send it over to Rance.